What's going on guys? Corey Smith here, CoreFX. Welcome back to another weekly technical talk video. Today is November 16th, 2018. It is Friday. Uh, I hope you guys had a great trading week. I know we had an awesome trading week here at CoreFX. Anybody that's new to these videos, I do these videos every week. It is a full market breakdown of the prior trading week, what's been going on, which pairs were the top and bottom performing. I go in a full on um, technical breakdown of the major currencies that we follow as well as the US dollar major crosses. So all the major currencies pinned up against the dollar as well as I dive into some trades from the prior week and I go over some trades that I'm looking at for the next trading week coming ahead. Go over a little bit of a breakdown on news as well what's going on in the macro environment here um, as all of these fundamentals do affect our currency trading. So again, my name is Corey Smith with CoreFX. This is the weekly technical talk. Anybody who's seen these before, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, I love you guys. love the support. Hope you guys are enjoying these videos still. If you do enjoy these videos, please throw a like, throw a comment. It means a lot. It goes a long ways. If you have any recommendations, things you want to see in other videos coming up, uh, please throw that into the comment section. would love to hear from you. Um, anybody who's new to these as again, throw the subscribe button out there. So you're notified every week when I upload these, make sure to check them out. We got my website in the link below as well. If you want to see the services I offer as a Forex trader, um, and coach. So that does it guys here for the intro. I'm gonna go ahead now and dive into some of the currencies and what we're doing, technical performance and all that. Um, thank you guys and I'll catch you in there. Alrighty, so starting here with the relative performance. So this shows us all the major currencies that we trade here in the FX markets, and it shows over a given time period. Right now we have it set to the prior week, which currencies, individual currencies, not pairs, but individual currencies performed the best all the way on the left, positive growth, and the worst all the way on the right, negative growth. Um, these are all pinned up against the US dollar. That's why the US dollar doesn't show a percentage change. However, um, when the dollar's to the right, that means it was a bottom performer. When it's to the left, it was a top. As you can see, almost every currency except for the pound outperformed the US dollar this week. We have the New Zealand dollar and the Australian dollars both um, having strong weeks. We have a little bit of a rally in equity markets, a little bit of um, you know confusion, but um, we are seeing some strength in the equity markets. There's still some optimism out there that leads to this risk on environment that we see Typically, New Zealand dollar, Aussie dollar strong. However, we've seen the Japanese yen performing good as well, which typically that performs weak in this time. So a uh, little bit of a mixed bag. There's a lot going on in the macro environment. One thing we do know for certain is the US, I mean, the British pound getting crushed, and that's because of the failed negotiations of Brexit. We have resignations going on out of uh, Theresa May's cabinet. They have a lot of questioning whether she's fit to lead this Brexit anymore. Um, and ultimately, when it comes to Brexit, there's three options, right? There is they negotiate a deal and land a deal for Brexit. They do a hard exit and they exit the UK, they exit the EU without negotiating a deal and things are just a toss up or Brexit doesn't happen altogether. So those are the three options we're seeing right now and what the market is weighing. Um, obviously, a Brexit with a negotiation would be the number one um, most market friendly. That would be the most bullish then you have a toss up between a hard Brexit without negotiations that could lead to a big sell off. Um, and then also Brexit being canceled could lead to a short term sell off. But I think ultimately that would bring some bullishness back to the currency as well. But that is what we have going on here. Pound has been very volatile. I suggest anybody stays away from trading it in the short term unless you are very good at trading these fundamental events and whipsaws, um, which I don't know anybody that is. So I would stay away from it. US dollar continues to get crushed, blew through the 97 support. We'll go over all these in a, in a bit, but um, fundamentally, that's what we got going on this week. These are the pairs that we have performing the best and the worst. Now I'm gonna go ahead and dive into the charts to show you each individual one and what we're looking like. Starting with the US dollar, you can see this beautiful trend that we've been seeing, right? With this higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, and price has been respecting structure pretty nicely, right? This higher high turned into the higher low, but then this higher high did not turn into the higher low. We had a temporary sell off the beginning of the week, came to this strong support area, thought maybe with these indecision candles, we'd be able to get a push off it. However, it continued to sell off now and it is moving lower. We can see here where a trend line could come into play right around this area. So that is the next area of support I'll be watching for. But I think retesting this prior higher low is where we may see the dollar come down to 96 before we potentially find support and continue higher. Um, I am still bullish the US dollar in the medium to long term. However, in the short term, I do think uh, we might see a little more of this continued sell-off. 
Euro, as we've been looking, is basically the exact same as the dollar, but inverted. Um, we started all the way down here on the week and have really just rallied all week with the euro um, back up above structure right this prior lower low we broke we're now above we could be setting a new lower high here or what we could be doing as we are with the dollar but in the uh, bullish side retesting this prior lower high and then potentially we get a sell off from there to continue this downtrend uh, again medium to long term I am bearish this pair short term I am still bullish as um we are seeing this continued rally here. Japanese yen has pretty much done exactly as we expected this week. Uh, we are hitting this very strong weekly support as I went over with you guys last week, retesting the lower low. And I showed you guys we could see a bounce off this level, very significant zone um, on the weekly and daily time frames. As you can see, we staggered around here for a little bit. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we've moved higher. These are bearish candles, but you have to remember these are based off of um, futures, charts, and these markets do have more gaps than our rolling 24-5 regular currency pairs. So even though this is a bearish candle, we opened all the way up here, closed down here. That's still, I mean, we lost most of the gains on the day, but it's still open bullish, right? This opened all the way up here, managed to push up to here, and now is closing below here. So that is um, a bullish day, even though it's a bearish candle, right? Um, so we want to keep an eye on what this pair is doing now. We are still in a downtrend, so I'm not saying that we want to look for longs. I was expecting a pop off this support for sure. That's what we've seen, but it's now respecting the 50 SMA. We're still respecting structure, right? So this is the lower high, this whole area. We set a lower low, pull back, lower high, push back. Now we're retesting lower low. So market structure is holding. We're ranging right now between the lower low and the lower high. So price may come up to retest the lower high on this trend line and sell off or it might just continue to rally, break through the trend, break through the SMAs, break through structure, and maybe we could reverse trend. Right now, it's kind of a toss-up for the yen, but uh, all in all, I am potentially looking for shorts, but we want to keep a close eye on the equity markets and the risk-on, risk-off theme we have there as the yen follows very closely with suit with that. The pound, as you guys can see, um, very choppy week, right? Started bullish, sold off extremely strong Thursday, bounced back on Friday. It's just ranging right here. Right, we got the lower low here and the lower high up here, and price is just ranging between them. Um, no clear direction, as I said earlier in this video, I do not recommend anyone trading this pair for a little bit until we get a little bit clearer direction with what's happening, where we're going, what this um, negotiation Brexit is going to end up looking like, and there can still be a lot of headlines in the coming weeks and months that can cause some serious volatility. You can have a perfect setup on the pound, beautiful technical setup, Works seven out of 10 times. You back tested it hundreds of times. You enter, Theresa May comes up and steps down from the negotiations. Boom, your trade could explode in your face, right? Could be for the bad or for the worse, but it's a lot worse to risk too much capital than to go for that big win, right? That's where risk reward comes in. When you have these big stellar events, your stop loss can get skipped right over. And the pound is the pair that will do it, right? So I'm recommending we stay out of the pound until we get clearer direction for one, because technically this is not good, right? We don't want to see markets that look like this. We want to see markets that look like this. Bottom left, top right, trending. Top left to bottom right, trending, right? Those are the markets we want to see, not this. This is range bound. That's not a good trading environment. All right, so that's the British pound. We want to kind of hang in there and see where direction's heading. CAD sell-off continues. Oil's been getting crushed. CAD's very heavily correlated with it. I can take these prior channel, um, Trend lines out of here for you guys, clean this chart up a little bit. But as you can see, um, the CAD, ever since it broke really um, in around this area, that's not a valid trend line. I'm just showing around the range where it broke. When it reversed trend, right? Below the 50 SMA now, 20 is below the 50, setting lower lows, lower highs, lower low. Pull back now to set what most likely could be a lower high. And we want to essentially just keep looking for shorting opportunities on the Canadian dollar. Um, as I think we're going to make our way back down to this 73.80 area of prior support, looking left, right? So um, that's where I think we're heading with the CAD. We want to keep an eye out for where it's going and uh, if it's going to continue respecting this structure. But as of right now, I do see shorts still on the table for the CAD. Swiss franc is still trading below this strong weekly level, as I showed you guys. Um, I was calling for a sell-off beginning of this week. We did get that to start the week. Continued to move lower, but we gapped below the low here and then immediately filled the gap and came back up into this range under this resistance. So um, again, 
Another one where we kind of have to wait and see. But I'm expecting if it comes back up to this area, I would like to see some rejection and that would be some good opportunities to then look for more shorts in the Swiss franc. Australian dollars basically done exactly what we expected. We call it a nice Australian dollar, US dollar long this week in the Core FX live trading room, our signal room. Um, links below if you want to check that out if you're not already in it. But we uh, caught this trade very nicely as you know, we were following this beautiful downtrend for some time, basically the entirety of 2018 up until now. We bottomed out here, basically a little bit of a double bottom slash inverted head and shoulders. You know, we tried to go lower, tried to go lower, failed to go lower, broke higher, broke the trend line, 50 SMA, broke this lower high structure, came up here to set a new higher high. Then before this week, price pulled back. We we're above the SMAs. They were about to cross. I told you guys this is a nice area for an early on trend reversal. Early on trend reversals have strong shifting momentum moves. Look at what we got here. Right, we got the higher high, pull back for a higher low, boom. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, four back-to-back -back bullish days. Not only were the candle closes bullish, but the gaps were bullish to the upside as well. So really nice rip higher here for the Australian dollar. Um, I am remaining bullish on this pair. I'm just going to keep an eye out for pullbacks. You know, these higher lows are where we want to get in, not the higher highs. So we want to look for the next higher low opportunity to get in to look for long opportunities for the Aussie dollar. That takes us to our New Zealand dollar. And as you guys can see here on the weekly chart, we've broken this structure, broken this trend. One, two, three strong bullish weeks in a row. We are above this very strong resistance uh, that was support here. As you can see here, this was the 68 to 66 range. That was a big weekly range in here. Price has ripped above it now, and it looks to be like we are closing above it as well on this weekly candle. Um, so bullish in the New Zealand dollar as well, as you can see here on the dollar. I was calling for this exact setup, just like with the Aussie dollar. Once it broke this structure, broke this trend, we are expecting to see a pullback, retest, push higher. That's exactly what it did. So again, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, strong bullish rip higher with this New Zealand dollar pair. And as with the Aussie, I am going to be looking for a pullback. This 68 range here is a very strong level looking left. So I would love to see price pull back, find support on that level, look for long opportunities to catch this next impulse higher on New Zealand dollar long. Now that takes us over to our beloved S&P 500, the US equity markets um, index, top 500 companies in the US. Um, and as you guys can see with this sell off that we saw, um, price has rebounded and Thursday, Friday, we're getting a rebound here as well. And as you can see that I called out on my Instagram, if you follow me on there, we have an inverted pattern here, an inverted head and shoulders. I actually posted on my story not long after I posted it. Bloomberg was calling it out with their analysts. We have an inverted head and shoulders candle pattern here. I mean, um, now this is not a <clears throat> trend continuation pattern. This is a reversal pattern. And the context of where it forms is what it's all about. This is after a strong sell off. We are looking left on an area of uh, you know support here around the 27, 25. Um, and we have a left shoulder head, right shoulder forming on after a pullback on support. So this could be um, a bullish pattern for us to get back into a push to the upside. But th this is a definitely uh, scary times here for US equity market and where price is heading. We had a horrible month for overall asset management um, hedge fund management type companies for October. So we'll see what the future looks like in these markets, but this is something we definitely want to keep an eye on as FX traders. Gold's still chopping around as well, just like we've been seeing the equity market's a little uncertain. The gold follows that pretty closely um, <clears throat> with an inverse correlation as gold is a safe haven asset. As you guys can see here, we broke above this resistance, now turned support, and we could have been looking for buys there. However, it broke back below it, now broke back above it. And uh, price is just really uncertain in gold. I would stay away from gold for now until we get a break above this resistance here or maybe below this support here um, and look for our next move. We can throw in a little counter trend line here. Look for a break of that to go short if that's what you're looking for. Um, but all in all, gold is a little messy right now and I'd be waiting to see what happens. Oil here, you guys can see this sell off. It's just been unbelievable. Um, all through October and now into November, just a ridiculous sell off from oil. We went from 76 a barrel all the way down to 56 a barrel in a matter of a month and a half. Um, that is a massive sell-off, right? That is $20 a barrel sell-off. That's like a 25% correction. Um, so we did break a very strong weekly trend line here in blue. 
Price is rallying a bit now. Maybe we'll get a retest of that. Look for opportunities to then short it further. But I've heard talk of getting down into the 40s. Um, we'll see if that's possible. But, uh, you know, these OPEC nations continue to produce. And that continues to create an oversupply. And, you know, ultimately, when there's an oversupply, price drops. So we need to see what's going on here in the oil markets fundamentally. However, technically, this looks like we just want to look for rally opportunities to get short at better pricing. So now taking it over to the US dollar crosses, what we call in the FX markets, the majors. You guys have a series of lower lows, lower highs, lower low, lower high, lower low, pulling back now to what could be just another lower high. Again, like we're seeing with the dollar and the euro, that is why this looks very similar as well. Uh, we're coming back now to retest the prior structure lower high, right? So this was the lower high. And normally in a trend, you set a lower low, then a lower high, then a lower low, then a lower high, then a lower low. Um, what this is doing is setting a lower low and then coming back all the way up to retest the prior lower high, right? Not a problem. Happens occasionally. Um, what we don't want to see is price come and break above this lower high. That would be a new trend changing higher high and then we potentially could see that happen. Um, as long as this trend remains, we want to see this uh, gray box here now with this lower high hold and if that does then we could be looking for short opportunities in the euro dollar next week we do have some strong bullish momentum here on friday that could end up closing pretty significantly bullish um which would make me hesitant at least to start the week next week um that price could return to the downtrend but we'll be keeping an eye we'd like to see you know maybe monday shooting star candle here uh rejecting this resistance would give us a nice opportunity to start looking for shorts on the smaller time frames Pound US dollar again with this choppiness, um, sold off, corrected, sold off. We're down to this weekly level again. Again, we are range bound here. So we're pinned between a lower high and a lower low and price is just ranging. So until it breaks either this weekly support or this daily resistance, I'm not looking for anything with this pair, but that is where we stand. Dollar CAD, this is what I uh, called for at the beginning of the week. If you watched last week's video, you can see when I exactly drew this line that's been sitting on my chart since then. Um, so price has pulled back now. We are hitting this prior structure, right? So we got higher high, higher low. Price broke structure, set a higher high. Pulling back, setting a higher low on what was the prior higher high. Very nice um, confirmation there for us. We got a couple day pullback here after a strong bullish push. Hitting support, that was resistance. Now we're starting to get a pin bar rejection to the downside. I'd like to see this close a hammer. And then next week, come into the week looking for potential long opportunities on dollar CAD. Dollar yen, somewhat similar. We set a new higher high, went up to retest this prior high, um, strong resistance area, and price sold off. We are now testing the 50 SMA, testing the prior higher low, close to this strong daily trend line. So um, pretty much out of wait and see. We got a strong bearish momentum candle here, so I don't really want to do anything looking to buy against that. Would like to again see it bottom out a little bit here. Buyers come into the market, push back a little bit and show us some confirmation before we start looking for longs. Otherwise, this pair could break through this and reverse the trend um, coming into next week. Dollar Swiss, another similar story, set a higher high, pull back. Now we are selling off pretty strong here. We're above this dollar um, resistance turned support. As you can see, it's a very significant level. You can see it rejected here multiple times. We're now hitting it again. We'll see if this area is able to hold. If it is, that's another one that could be decent for looking for long opportunities. Um, however, the way it looks right now, it is uh, selling off pretty strong. And we might have to wait and see if this is going to reverse rather than continue. Aussie dollar here. This was the um, trade alert that we took in the signal room. But as you can see, it broke trend with this trend line breaking, 50 SMA breaking, set a new higher high, hit this strong daily resistance, corrected a few days. And then boom, we caught that long on the next pop up after hitting this 50 SMA, also on prior structure, right? So this lower high was broken and then retested in this um, area right here, right? Um, so beautiful long opportunity here in Aussie dollar and it's continuing to push higher. We're nearing a strong weekly level of resistance. So I'll look for the next correction to then look for the next long opportunity. Afterwards, New Zealand dollar, very similar setup as well. Was in a downtrend, reversed that trend, pulled back a few days, and then exploded from there. We're nearing uh, 200 SMA. We blew right through a weekly um, support resistance level. As you can see, even just looking left here on the daily, how strong of a zone it is. Um, so I think maybe we bounce and then 
pull back to this weekly level to look for our next long opportunity, potentially here on New Zealand dollar, US dollar. So moving on to the watch list, first one up is New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen. Um, as you guys can see, we broke trend with this pair as well. Fourth touch this strong weekly support, we exploded higher. Every slight little pullback is exploding afterwards, pullback exploding afterwards. Starting to lose a little bit of momentum, a little bit of gas here. But um, again, with this pair, I'll just be looking for long opportunities after pullbacks, right? I wanna look for opportunities where price comes back to us, we get discounted pricing and we find support, and then we look for long opportunities off of that support to catch the next wave higher. Pound New Zealand, as you guys can see, has just been really just bombing. Um, Pound's one of the weakest performers of the week, New Zealand's one of the top performers of the week. So as you can see, this would have been the biggest trade of the week if you had been in this pair. Um, just continuing to sell off, continuing to rip lower. And that is a nice opportunity for us to come and look for shorts in the coming weeks. This is a very nice level I would like to see price retrace to. Right? So if we have price retrace this coming week to this level, find resistance, nice short opportunity we could have there. First target, we'd have a clear cut support area to look for our first target. And then we could, you know, look for larger gains down the road. However, that is a nice setup we'll be looking for this week. Another wait and see. We need price to correct and come to us. We have to be patient. That's one of the biggest things trading successfully requires. So that is what we're going to be doing. Next, we got pound CAD. This isn't really something I'm trading. I just wanted to show you guys this range. I went over it last week when we came up to retest it. I told you guys um, we could be seeing a sell off from it. It did actually come back up after it sold off to start the week, retested through a nice little doji candle and then boom that brexit news had it sell off strong so if you like range trading and you like support resistance trading you could essentially wait for price to come back down to support look to get in long you know you could have your stop below the range here target at either the top of the range would be a pretty aggressive target or you know somewhere in here would even still be a great risk to reward when you're talking entering here stop there take profit that's at least a four to one even just here so, um, you know, I don't recommend personally just because I've tested and always stuck to trend trading. But for those of you who are range bound traders that like support and resistance trading, reversal trading, things of that nature, this could be a good opportunity coming into next week or the following week. Euro New Zealand, another one um, just getting crushed. We are on strong weekly support area now. I would like to see, um, you know, price bounce off of this rally a little bit and then look for a shorting opportunity to catch that next phase lower last week we were looking for that we wanted price to rally up to here catch that sell off this week we're going to be looking for the same thing right we're going to look for price to bounce off this weekly support now rally look for a nice resistance and then look to short it from there euro aussie same story right so we're still pushing lower here we want to see a rally we want to see price push back up higher get us a better discounted price get us a little more um confirmation that price is you know ran out of that that downward trend got exhausted retraced a little bit and then the buyers i mean the sellers come back and they're ready to make another push lower and that's when we want to be in the markets that's when we want to jump in and catch that next phase to the downside next we have aussie new zealand very similar story again here so we have a new lower low being set we want price to rally push up maybe we find resistance somewhere in here and catch that next push to the downside Aussie cats, Aussie Swiss. Um, another thing here, pushing higher. Would love to see this pull back next week and look for long opportunities. This week we were looking for price to pull back a little bit further to catch longs. Unfortunately, it didn't. It pulled back only a little bit and then took off. So this next week we might be looking for a little more of a pullback. Maybe it comes back to retest this area down here. So um, before we look for long opportunities, Aussie CAD. Similar story again. We're hitting 200 SMA. My price most likely will pull back now. We would like to look for price to pull back into this range. Same range we were looking for the prior week and look for price to bounce off there. New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar. Um, as you guys can see last week, I was calling for a pullback here. That would have been a nice setup. Pulling back to this area to catch the long. However, again, like with the other pairs we've been seeing, price just ripped higher. Ripped right through 200 SMA, right through this resistance supply zone. And it's just pushing higher. Um, so our next thing we'd want to watch for is this level. Maybe price hits it and does this, right? Similar thing that we keep looking for. 
you guys are seeing a theme across the pairs that I'm watching, and there is a reason that it all looks similar, and that I have exact strategy that I follow. This is the reason I am able to consistently pull money out of these markets. This is the reason I am consistently profitable, and I've been able to make it as a successful professional trader. Consistency, strategy, discipline, patience, risk management, these are the qualities that make traders who they are and what they are when they succeed and the way to become that 5% or less of traders that actually make money in these markets, right? So um, sticking to my plan, I'm waiting for this to rip higher, wait for it to pull back, come to me, then I look for long opportunities. New Zealand Swiss, similar story, right? I wanted to see a pullback to this range, didn't happen, price continued higher. We're now hitting another weekly level. Um, it might not look that clean on the daily chart because it's a weekly level of the blue, but um, this is a strong weekly level here. On the daily, we can attribute it to more of uh, like this area, right? So let's say this area. Um, we'll look for a pullback. Maybe that area is our next target, right? Maybe we pull back to like the 200 SMA or so in here. I'd like to see a little bit of a deeper pullback after very strong parabolic moves like that. You know, Fibonacci, 382, 50, 618. I'd like to see a deeper pullback. Maybe a 382 on this one. That would be right where the 200 SMA is curling. Pop. Catch that next move higher. That would be a great opportunity for a long. Again, price does what it wants. The markets do what it wants. We have to develop a plan, wait for it to come to us. Um, and price might just continue higher. That trade might just run away and keep running away. And that is totally fine. We are going to have a plan. Wait for it. If it happens, execute. CAD Swiss Frank, this I'm not really looking at too closely, but um, we thought the pattern could have been breaking out this past week here, but it instead just continued to base. So this is the new pattern we could be looking for in here. On a four hour, you can see where price has just been staggering around in here. Um, but again, we see this oil continue to sell off. That should continue to drag CAD lower, and we will see if that is able to create... Uh, a, bull, a bearish break out of this. Otherwise, if we break this upper trend line to the upside, I think that's a much higher probability chance of price following through because it's in the direction of the trend. So we'll have to wait and see where this pair goes. But I want to keep this included in here for, um, you know, just a little bit of different analysis. All right, guys. So that does it for the video this week. Really hope you guys are enjoying these videos. Please, please, please. Again, if you like what you see, throw a like, throw a comment throw a subscribe. If you're new to these videos, it means a lot. It makes doing these videos all worth it. I really appreciate it for you guys stopping in. Um, if you have any questions, please always feel free to reach out to me. You can leave me a comment. You can throw me an email, Corey at corefxtrading.com. My website's in the links below. You can check out what I offer. Contact me through there on Telegram. I have a number of different chats. Uh, anything you guys need, just reach out to me. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. I hope you enjoy what you see. I hope we have a great weekend here. I hope you have a great trading week up ahead, and I will catch you guys in the next one.